You know, the resveratrol field, when I first was following it back in, I guess, the early 2000s, um, you know, I was a very skeptical that there would be any effect in humans um, taking resveratrol because certainly not from drinking a glass of wine, yeah. but um, from supplementing just because it seemed as though like the dose is required to get some really beneficial effects, at least in some of the rodent studies, seemed sort of, you know, high and it wasn't, it didn't seem very attainable. Um, but as you know, this th there was a really um, sort of compelling primate study in rhesus, rhesus monkeys. Um, I forgot when that was published. It was like mid-2000s or 2011 or something like right. that. Right. Uh, Rafa Rukawa's group at NIH. Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, they, they gave these rhesus monkeys uh, resveratrol, and I think they started out with a lower dose, like 80 milligrams per right. kilogram, and they went up to like 480. Any reason, do you know why they start with, I've seen more than one study do that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, just anecdotally, what Rafa told me, I think, is that um, they started at the low dose and didn't see a change in pulse wave velocity in the blood vessels, so they upped it, and then that's where they saw the benefit. Oh, okay. So, um, well, this study was, you know, the, the, the doses were very doable in humans when you, you know, convert. Um, and, and basically, they, you know, feeding these, these monkeys, they were feeding them, like, this terrible high, high sucrose diet, high sucrose and high fat, and they, like, it caused them to have, like, 40% increased aortic stiffness. Yeah. But the resveratrol completely ameliorated it. Like, yeah. So I was like, holy crap, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I think that was the one study that sort of changed my view. Uh, and then I started to sort of get into the literature and read more. And so there was, you know, there's been a variety of clinical studies, as you know. And Yeah. Well, I'm glad somebody's reading the literature. Um, <laughs> Because there, there was there was a hate me club with resveratrol uh, because it got so much attention. Anything that gets a lot of attention gets the hate me club right. uh, in reverse. But resveratrol, I still take resveratrol, um, probably a, a gram or so every a morning. Gram? Really? Yeah, in my yogurt. Um, I don't measure it out. I just shake it in. So it might be half a gram to a gram. Is this from your own like stash, it, or it's, is it's it a, like it's a, a stash in the basement? Uh, it's I've a had private it for stash. Years. It is. I'm not because <laughs> I don't dealer. usually find. Doses of resveratrol above 250 milligrams. Yeah, right. You, you made a good point, which is it, it's a really uh, insoluble molecule. And that's one of the, well, there are two problems with resveratrol. One is it's really insoluble. So if, if you just give it as a dry powder to an animal or a human, it's less likely to get absorbed. We know that as a fact. Include it with a bit of fat, it'll go up five to tenfold in the bloodstream. Really? And so the big effect we've seen in mice and monkeys is with a bit of fat in the diet wow. as well. And um, then the second problem with resveratrol is that it's light sensitive. And so those people who, researchers who put it in a plate with worms or um, didn't treat the molecule with respect, it goes brown, it goes off. Uh, it's one of the reasons it's very hard to put in a cosmetic because your cosmetic will turn brown. Um, if, you, if you use brown res resveratrol, it won't work. So you've got to keep it in the dark, in the cold, and it'll be fine. Okay, so... so um... Or in a basement. Cold, dark, and also, I think there's various forms like trans resveratrol. I, I'd go for the trans because when we gave the cis form to the sirtuin enzyme, it didn't activate it, but the trans worked brilliantly. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it, Rafa de Cabo, actually, uh, he's been a good friend over the years, a great colleague. He did the study with us on the mouse resveratrol study that showed that on a high fat diet, those mice were extremely healthy and longer lived. And their organs, when we they opened up the mice, they were pristine. So they, the mice were still obese because we didn't give them a lot of resveratrol. It was a pretty low dose. But their organs were so beautiful. Um, their arteries, when you stain them for oil or fat, it was night and day. The ones on resveratrol, well, the ones without resveratrol, were stained with fatty lumps. Resveratrol, clean. And that alone makes me say, you know, resveratrol is probably not going to hurt me. And uh, it may very well help my cardiovascular system. It seems to be really important for the cardiovascular system. Like, and I'm just kind of wondering, do you know why? Why is it? Uh, we, we have a number of ideas. And resveratrol is a dirty molecule. So there's not just one way it works. Um, sirtuins definitely are involved. We now have a mouse that's mutant for the resveratrol activation of SIRT1. So we now see that some, some aspects like endurance of resveratrol seem to be through SIRT1. So one of the effects is through SIRT1's anti-inflammatory actions in the lining of the, of the blood vessels, the endothelial cells. Oh. Yeah, okay. that seems to be important. And uh, there's other aspects also in DNA repair as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
infiltration of macrophages in there seems to be dampened. And we also looked at oxidative stress in those arteries of those mice treated, and it was way down in the resveratrol mice. Yeah, with the rhesus monkeys, with the, you know, basically like, you know, completely reversing that 40% aortic stiffness, that's like pretty, it's pretty dramatic effect. It, it, so it was, is, and, and so yeah, I think resveratrol, it's, people are, you know, always are true, is it not, 60 Minutes did a story, and then there was an argument about how it was working, and so people are confused about the molecule, and I, I still stand by it because the results, like you say, in animals, and in, there are clinical studies now yes. that, that are really positive in, in humans. Uh, not all of them. Sometimes it has no effect. There was one study where it interfered with um, endurance exercise. Um, yeah. Don't understand that. that. But that Foreman was kind of shown to do something similar where right. it prevented mitochondrial adaptations. Yeah, I mean, maybe, what, Rhonda, what's oh, maybe happening is that if you're dampening antioxidant or dampening free radicals too much, yes. you're actually losing that benefit. Hormetic effect. Exactly, right. the mitohermesis. But, um, but I haven't seen any downside. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm an N of one, in, as you would say, in a clinical trial. I've had my heart checked out with a 3D movie, uh, MRI. My heart looks like it's 20. It's got no sign of aging. So it doesn't seem to be doing myself and my dad any harm. So How long have you been taking it? Oh, gee, since 2003. Wow. And you take about a gram, give or so, yeah. a day. 